I'm delighted to be here today to talk to you about some of our endeavours in trying to improve drug discovery for cell surface receptors. I want to start by acknowledging the huge team of people involved in this work. Working with international partners from all around the world is a fantastic experience because in science it's always a big team effort and everyone brings unique uh, skill sets to hopefully work towards solving a common goal or a common problem. Without that collective of, of really talented people all across the globe, um, work like this that's multidisciplinary wouldn't be possible. So proteins are the machines of the body. They come in all shapes and sizes and perform a diverse range of functions, including antibodies, which protect our body by recognizing foreign pathogens, enzymes, which carry out thousands of chemical reactions within the cell, structural proteins that provide support to cells and allow our body to move, and transport and storage proteins, which bind and carry atoms and molecules within the cells and throughout the entire body. But the proteins I want to touch on today are a class of cell surface proteins. So our body is made up of trillions of cells and their ability to communicate with each other is vital. So cells are separated from each other and the environment by a membrane. These cell surface receptors are embedded within this barrier and allow the cell to sense their external environment and translate it into an intracellular signal. So there are hundreds of these receptors and they recognize a variety of different molecules and ligands. So upon binding a molecule, this receptor then is able to send an intracellular signaling event by coupling with an internal protein being a G protein. And this is where these receptors get their name, being G protein coupled receptors. So this communication allows for coordinated control of cells that underpins our complex physiology, involved in everything from vision, pain, metabolic and cardiovascular function, amongst many others. Disruption of this normal cellular functioning leads to disease, and altered behaviour of these receptors can contribute to this disease occurring. But therefore, they are also important targets for various drugs. Now to date, GPCR drug discovery has really looked at two paradigms, either blocking the endogenous molecule and turning off the receptor, or turning on this receptor and activating it by mimicking the endogenous molecule. One key challenge with its approach is specifically or exclusively dragging the particular receptor that you're interested in, because at this orthosteric binding pocket, it can be highly conserved amongst a variety of different receptors. One really good example of this are neurotransmitters like dopamine, adrenaline, noradrenaline, amongst others, which share this very similar chemical scaffold. And because they share this large degree of overlap in how these signaling molecules look, you can imagine that evolutionary, how they bind to their given or respective receptor is highly similar. And this is problematic because drugs hitting unintended receptors can cause unwanted and nasty side effects. Challenge two it is now appreciated that receptors are increasingly complex in terms of the diverse signaling that they are able to cause. So traditionally, these receptors were viewed simply as bimodal or on-off switches, but it's now appreciated that in reality, they are able to adopt multiple confirmations that are coupled to multiple different signaling outputs. So even when we can design a selective molecule that hits exclusively the receptor that we're interested in, there can be both beneficial outcomes from this action, as well as side effect occurring signaling events. Traditional targeting has really focused on turning off or turning on this receptor. But again, this can be problematic due to selectivity and also due to the fact that this is then going to cause lots of different signaling events. One strategy is this idea of modulation, where we identify a separate drug pocket, which can allow the receptor to act as a dimmer switch and as well as a way to achieve drugs with better selectivity. And so we get a reduced output and hopefully reduce the side effects associated. A second strategy is known as bias. So this is where we can think of our drug more like a prism in which we can design certain molecules that allow for beneficial signaling without the rest of this signaling occurring. Thus, we can selectively choose the type of light we want to let through. 
Then finally is some of the new and exciting work we're doing at the Flory, which involves alternatives to small molecules and medicinal chemistry, and instead use this very unique immune system of camelids, such as alpacas, to make biologics that can engage these receptors in a drug-like way. So chronic pain is a massive problem. So the system we've turned to to try and start to tackle this issue is the adenosine system. So adenosine is a chemical found throughout the entire body and is important for cellular protection. And it has also been suggested to be really important for pain signaling. But drug discovery at these receptors has been somewhat tricky. So this is partly because there are four receptors that recognize adenosine and they contribute contrastingly to our, our ability to sense pain. So while the adenosine A1 receptor is antinociceptive or relieves pain, the other adenosine receptors can be pronociceptive or inducing pain. Thus, drug discovery has been hampered by our inability to design molecules that specifically interact with this adenosine A1 receptor over the other adenosine receptors. So thus, we turned our focus to this idea of using a different pocket away from the orthosteric site and then treating this more like a dimmer switch rather than an off-on switch. So it's become increasingly appreciated over the years that potentially all receptors possess these allosteric binding pockets. And these allosteric binding pockets are binding sites that are non-overlapping and spatially distinct from where the endogenous molecule binds. So we can design drugs that recognize this allosteric pocket and then they may have the ability to alter the response and or the binding of the endogenous molecule. And the degree to which they do this is the extent to which we turn up or down this dimmer switch. The main problem with the opioids is that you're, again, targeting that, that same orthosteric or conserved main binding site within the opioid receptor. And so with that comes all the potential side effects associated with by over-engaging the receptor, whereby uh, certain signaling pathways might be associated with side effects. The big advantage of the adenosine A1 receptor system is you don't have uh, the addiction and the respiratory depression side effects that you get with opioid analgesics. It's really hard to generate something that's selective and only engages that particular adenosine receptor that we care about. And that's hopefully where this dimmer switch idea comes in, uh, engaging a different binding pocket where we can get something that's exclusive for the adenosine A1 receptor, but also something that doesn't overactivate the receptor, uh, but also doesn't underactivate. So getting that really precise, dialed in, appropriate amount of response that we care about. So the next thing I want to talk to you today about is this biostagonism. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in Australia. The adenosine A1 receptor is also implicated in cardiovascular function. The tricky thing, though, is that signalling by adenosine through the adenosine A1 receptor is associated with both cytoprotective signalling outcomes as well as bradycardia or slowed heart rate outcomes. So what would be great is if we could design a molecule which is able to dissect these two contrasting signalling events. So while our endogenous molecule, such as adenosine, might signal equally through separate pathways, in theory, it's possible to design molecules which recognize and signal only down particular pathways, with the promise of these bias molecules being that we could potentially design ligands which selectively engage with therapeutically relevant signaling outcomes while not signaling through those that mediate side effects. Lauren and Arthur, along with Peter Scammels, have been trying to do this for the adenosine A1 receptor. And they came up with this molecule, VCP746. VCP746 seems to selectively engage with those events related to cytoprotection without this adverse event occurring. So the final thing I wanna to talk to you today about is the work we started to do at the Flory using these guys, alpacas, to come across alternative to small molecules for these important receptors. Importantly, the alpacas are really well looked after for six to 12 months of their life, helping us produce uh, hopefully a, a, an interesting antibody for our, our particular cell surface receptors we care about. They then uh, go off and live a very happy retired lifestyle. So most GPCR targeting agents that have been approved so far are small molecules. But over recent years, there's been a growing number of drugs in the clinic in phase one, two, and three trials that are non-small molecule alternatives. 
But to date, there's been only one FDA-approved GPCR antibody as a therapeutic. This is because these are very challenging to produce, and it's even harder to obtain antibodies that have drug-like action at these receptors. So we've been using our packers. So this involves generating a purified receptor, the receptor that you're particularly interested in for a therapy, and then immunizing our packers with this receptor over the course of six weeks, with the aim being that these alpacas generate an immune response to this foreign receptor. So it's then a matter of isolating the genetic information from this immune response. And then we're developing novel methodologies to pull out interesting nanobodies or antibodies that recognize the therapeutic targets that we're interested in. With one day hopefully being able to generate nanobodies that are therapeutically useful for things like cancer, metabolic disease, amongst many other conditions. The thing I'd really like people to take away from today is just the importance of doing fundamental basic research in understanding molecular mechanisms as well as drug action for these important receptors and the molecules we can create for them. Because hopefully a detailed understanding of how these things work will enable better drug discovery to occur. With better drug discovery, hopefully there are uh, then really effective but safe medicines available for some pretty awful diseases which currently have a, a large unmet need.